Can energy from flowers be used to cure disease? Stay tuned. Hey there, welcome to Science Is You. If you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to help this channel get off the ground and to support our mission of making science enjoyable and accessible for everyone. Thanks for watching. Bach flower remedies have been around for over 90 years as a homeopathic treatment for a number of conditions ranging from anxiety and depression to insomnia, ADHD, and physical pain in both humans and animals, with tons of testimonials and success stories. But what is the science behind how they work? Or do they really work? This paper gathered all the scientific studies they could find on these flower remedies and found some surprising answers. Bach flower remedies were invented in 1931 by the British physician and microbiologist Dr. Edward Bach. He hypothesized that illnesses are deeply connected with psychology and emotions. He experimented with creating flower tinctures made by soaking specific types of flowers in water and heated for a few hours either by sunlight or boiling. The water is then filtered to remove the flowers and a small amount of brandy added as a preservative. The remedies are taken at a dosage of 2-4 to four drops either directly on the tongue in a glass of water or further diluted and a few drops of this mixture used as a dosage. So this is very dilute. Is there really enough of the chemicals or whatever from the flowers in there to do anything? Well, these mixtures likely don't contain significant amounts of chemicals or other molecular components of the actual flowers, but supposedly their mechanism of action is not based on concentration of a drug or other substance, rather the transfer of some sort of energy or vibrations from the flowers to the water. That sounds really unlikely, right? Well, not necessarily. There have actually been many huge scientific discoveries that started with a description of some sort of invisible force, energy, or substance that somehow caused observable effects, even though not fully understood at the time. For example, germ theory of disease, electromagnetic fields, radio waves, and dark matter in the universe. So it isn't totally inconceivable that these flower tinctures work in some way that we don't fully understand yet. But what diseases do they treat? And do they really work? Buck developed 38 flower essences or remedies to supposedly alleviate negative emotions or pain and restore health. Each essence is designed to treat a different set of symptoms. Rescue Remedy is a combination of some of these essences that supposedly treat shock and panic attacks and are often used for animals that are injured, scared, or being transported. The essences can be applied for a variety of conditions such as anxiety and depression, enhancing focus in ADHD, pregnancy, and even side effects from cancer treatments. Although there are many positive reviews and testimonials, what about scientific clinical trials? This review paper searched out all the studies they could find on the subject. They located around 50 articles, but only a handful of these were randomized controlled clinical trials. Controlled clinical trial means that participants were separated into two groups, one that is given the treatment being tested, the other is given a control which isn't expected to have any effect. For example, a controlled treatment for the Bach flower remedy might be plain water, but no essence. The purpose of comparing to a control is to account for experimental errors or variation that could be misinterpreted as an effect of the treatment. This could include, for example, the placebo effect, where people feel better because they believe the treatment will help them. Randomizing a controlled experiment means that the participants were split up randomly in to either the control or treatment groups. For example, we didn't put everyone under the age of 50 in the control group and everyone over 50 in the treatment groups. Even better is when the study is double-blinded, which means participants and researchers don't even know who was assigned to each group until the end of the experiment. 
The authors found only a handful of studies that had been published according to these criteria at the time of their writing in 2010. These included a study of anxiety in university students who were taking exams. Rescue remedy was dosed one to four times per day for seven days before and during the exams. Anxiety was measured with a questionnaire that rated emotions and feelings of stress on a numerical scale. This was compared to students who were given an indistinguishable placebo with the same dosing schedule. However, no significant difference was found between the self-reported anxiety levels of students who took real rescue remedy or placebo. A separate but similar study previously had found the same and concluded that flower remedies are an effective placebo. Yet another study examining students under stress reported that all groups had shown a decrease in stress following drinking either water mixed with rescue remedy or plain water, regardless of whether or not they were told the water was just water or contained rescue remedy. These results would seem to suggest that these flower remedies don't really have any effect other than maybe a placebo. See, I knew it. These flower tinctures are pure fake. Well, a different study of nursing students taking an exam found that although anxiety levels didn't differ between students who were given rescue remedy and those who were given placebo, a subgroup of high anxiety students did demonstrate a statistically significant difference between stress levels pre and post rescue remedy. These findings suggested that the rescue remedy might have had some therapeutic effect in individuals with severe anxiety that couldn't be fully explained with the placebo effect. Yet another study examined the effect of rescue remedy on children with ADHD by giving them either real remedy or placebo four times per day for three months. The students were then evaluated by a teacher using a rating scale based questionnaire, but no significant differences could be found. A different study investigated the effectiveness of rescue remedy in patients prior to surgery. They measured levels of anxiety, heart rate, and blood pressure between two groups of patients assigned to take either rescue remedy or placebo. There was a slight decrease in anxiety as well as heart rate and blood pressure in the group that had taken rescue remedy, which led the researcher of the study to make very positive conclusions about the effectiveness of the remedies. However, the results were not statistically significant, which means that the differences were small and could have been just due to random chance. So it really isn't appropriate to draw a positive conclusion just because there appears to be a slight trend. But there is an additional piece of data that was significant. The study participants were told to take the remedy as frequently as they wanted the day prior to the operation, particularly when they felt anxious or stressed. The number of times the remedy was taken did decrease significantly in the rescue remedy group compared to the placebo group, from which the author concluded that these patients must have experienced less anxiety the day prior to surgery. Was this an appropriate metric of anxiety though? Hmm, perhaps, but it also could have been influenced by other factors. Also, the sample size here was small, only 18 participants per group, so it maybe it wasn't enough to show small improvements, or it could be that the remedy did work for a few people, but not at all for others. Altogether though, the few studies up until the time of this writing in 2010 weren't very convincing, and the authors of this review suggested that the negative clinical findings and lack of clear scientific basis suggested further research isn't warranted. Ouch. But some researchers did it anyway. A study of rescue remedy infused cream and the treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome reported significant improvement of symptoms in the rescue remedy groups and decreased need for surgery. Other case reports and pilot studies exist, but the risk with these is there's high chance for confirmation bias, picking out one positive result believed to be attributable to the flower remedy and perhaps making a broad set of conclusions based on it. Pilot studies or other trials by individuals associated with the Bach flower sellers should also be viewed skeptically since there is clearly a conflict of interest. But what about all the positive reviews and testimonials? All those people can't be wrong. Well, keep in mind the studies so far have been pretty limited in scope. For example, nearly all of them examined only rescue remedy. And a few of them did have some positive findings, even if so. This area of alternative homeopathic treatment 
appears to be minimally studied with rigorous double-blinded, controlled scientific trials. Alternatively, it could be that a placebo effect exists. That means that it's all fake and they don't do anything, right? Not necessarily. The Bach remedies are outfitted with far more detailed descriptions of emulsions and conditions compared to many over-the-counter medicines. Users of the remedies are encouraged to read through all of them and pick descriptions that feel applicable. It's plausible that this could introduce an element of self-reflection and mindfulness and a psychological benefit. A recent study of insomnia and anxiety among healthcare workers compared individualized flower essence treatments with no treatment. They found that this essence treatment did appear to improve several things like insomnia, anxiety, fear, and worry in a statistically significant manner compared to control. Could this have been placebo? Sure, but hey, if a placebo treatment has psychological benefits, that could be a relevant finding. But rescue remedy can also be used to treat animals in distress. Animals can't read? Actually, a study done in rats found that rescue remedy appeared to lower blood sugar and improve HDL cholesterol and lower triglycerides. But surprisingly few studies appear to have been done with animals. So what's the verdict? Are flower essences real or fake? Often we think of science as being one way or another, either proving or debunking claims. But really, science is a process of collecting and evaluating evidence that either support or don't support an idea or hypothesis. Currently, there does not appear to be a lot of data supporting clinical effectiveness of these remedies, but there are also not that many rigorous studies performed. But these remedies have been around for nearly a hundred years. How is it that they haven't been fully evaluated? So there is an unfortunate push in scientific writing to publish exciting positive findings. For example, it sounds much more enticing to read that something unexpected works than to read unsuccessful use of Bach remedies to treat ADHD or something like that. You get the point. Also, many mysteries remain regarding these essences, and there isn't really a clear scientific basis yet. What is flower energy? How did Bach come up with these very exact descriptions for the healing properties of each flower? Still, in science, it's important to keep an open mind. Without it, many great discoveries and inventions could be missed. Okay, but are there any dangers or risks to giving these a try? Possibly. Other than the obvious allergies or sensitivities to any ingredients, let's say you're diagnosed with an illness and don't seek medical care or medications that we know do work, and instead choose the flower remedies, and then they don't work for you, that could be bad. But hey, it's also possible they could be a good complement to existing traditional therapies, even if the benefit is psychological. It seems like researchers are divided in opinion on their effectiveness. What do you think? Is the research sufficient? Are they effective, placebos, or just plain fake? Share it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to help this channel get off the ground. And remember, 